this is your sixth tutorial on analytical chemistry and I'm pretty sure that this will be the last now um, in the last one we did detection of anions like uh, carbonate, sulfite, sulfide uh, note the difference and uh, also the color salt solutions now we're going to quickly move on to detection of chloride chloride which is of course Cl- minus. Now, uh, the way to detect this is is really the same as the last three, where you added uh, dilute H2SO4, but in this case, to the salt of Cl, you add concentrated H2SO4. Concentrated. You learn more under the H2SO4 chapter, but for now, just stick with this. And uh, what you will get is any HSO4 well you could get any 2 so 4 but that has some conditions attached to it you'll do that under preparation of HCl I think yeah HCl so this gives HCl now what happens is that HCl over here is of course not the acid it is the colorless gas so we can write colorless colorless and um, if you remember it also has a pungent smell uh, suffocating smell so you could write pungent here so this tells us that there is a chlorine radical over here but if you want to go further uh, this HCl now if you remember the test for HCl under detection of gases uh, the main one was that uh, it gives dense white fumes when you bring a raw dipped in ammonium hydroxide solution near it so ammonium hydroxide we wrote the reaction as well so you have NH4OH it's like the fifth time I'm drawing this uh, you have a rod in it take the rod out bring it near this HCl over here and what you'll see is very dense white fumes and these white fumes are ammonium chloride NH4Cl also a few more tests for HCl it fumes in moist air I think you'll do that on the, the HCl chapter just learn it for now and it also gives a white precipitate with AgNO3 solution uh, I guess you'll just learn this it's not really necessary but learn it as uh, when you add HCl to AgNO3 which is silver nitrate you get a white precipitate which is actually AgCl ok so uh, that's it for chloride sorry I'm rushing a bit but it's a 6 video on this and uh, I think most of it is really <coughs> yeah, sorry <coughs> I'm rushing a bit, sorry about that, and I think that's mainly because uh, I think most of it is just learning up and all that you can do on your own, there's no real understanding in this chapter, uh, the understanding bits I'm covering. So uh, detection of nitrate is next. So in nitrate, what you do is again you add concentrated H2SO4. So now let's take the salt as NaNO3. Add again H2SO4, concentrated, keep in mind. And what it gives you is KHSO4. Sorry. What it gives you is so what it gives you over here is NaHSO4, same as the above, which here it gives you. HNO3 which is nitric acid um, ok so now to test the nitric acid um, you'll do this under the nitric acid chapter as well you need to add uh, Cu to it copper turnings it's called it's basically copper and what you get is NO2 just take this HNO3 here, add the Cu, 
what you'll get is NO2. Now you remember in the detection of gases there were tests for NO2 as well. It's a reddish brown gas having pungent uh, irritating odor and uh, that's it really and it turns care paper brown. So as long as it fulfills these conditions uh, it means that it uh, it means also means that HNO3 is evolved and this in turn means that there is an NO3 over here. So it is all linked together. So, um, but it's basically just using your knowledge of detection of gases, and uh, that's about it. Uh, now, coming to sulfate. Sulfate is very easy. I don't need much space for this. Just gonna draw a line here. For sulfate, uh, sulfate is SO4 minus. SO4 two minus. So um, now, if you have a soluble metallic sulfate, soluble metallic sulfate. So an example of that is Na2SO4. And to this, uh, you will add BaCl2, which is barium chloride. The reaction will give you. BaSO4 this is important and along with that it will give you NaCl not so important uh, we're gonna focus on this BaSO4 is actually it's a white precipitate and it is insoluble in a lot of stuff really so due to this we can easily figure out that this is BaSO4 Remember, white precipitate and insoluble. Uh, so, if this is evolved, that also means that this SO4 over here is coming from this SO4 over here. So, it means that you've detected the SO4 radical. Um, and I think uh, I I'm not going to go over to the next video for hydrogen. So, I'm going to do that quickly as well. Let's clear it up a bit there okay hydrogen is again pretty simple as long as you know your detection of gases how to identify hydrogen uh, you'll know this as well okay so when you have uh, an active metal active metal uh, you could take any you could take uh, Zn, you could take Mg, any of these. Let's take uh, Zn for now. And you add it to HCl. What you get is, uh, I think you would have done this pretty thoroughly under HCl as well as acids, bases, salts, and uh, maybe, maybe, maybe even last year. So what you get is Zn sorry not Zn you get ZnCl2 and along with that you get H2 so all you need to do is identify that the gas release is H2 now how do you do that go back to de detection of gases it is colorless odorless and the most important it burns with a uh, blue flame and a popping sound so I'm just gonna write pop and I'm gonna just make a slightly blue color so you can remember it so that's it really as long as you can verify that this is H2 you know that the anion here is also H now notice that uh, the anion in HCl is H as well as C and it's a covalent bond so it's not an anion in the true sense but what we're basically saying is identifying a negative element a non-metal so anions would be a slightly wrong term to use here uh, but it's basically to uh, just verify that there is an H in the compound same way for say SO4 when we're detecting SO4 we're actually just saying um, 
that SO4 is present in the compound. There's no, it's not necessary as such that it comes first or second or anything like that. Okay. Now one last topic I need to cover before this chapter is over. It's about amphoteric nature of metals. Amphoteric, there are certain elements which are amphoteric. Uh, an example is zinc and another one is aluminium. So there's Zn and there's Al. Now there are just a few reactions where it, uh, they won't act like normal metals. Uh, I'm gonna go it pretty quickly because there's not much explanation. It's just theory which you need to learn up, and you can find it in your books. Uh, Zn, when reacted with an acid, will always displace the hydrogen. Zn, when reacted with a base, will always again liberate the H2. And at the same time, I'm just gonna do one reaction so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Zn plus say NaOH will give you now you know that it liberates H2 so H2 is there for sure now the other compound uh, you can see that this has gone out of the picture so you can cross this out from here what you have left is Na, Zn and O now these combine to form a compound which is Na2ZnO2 Na2 ZnO2 which is not your usual compound you can see that there are two metals over here um, and at your level you're not supposed to go beyond these details but just remember that this uh, this irregular behavior is actually due to the amphoteric nature of Zn and we'll come to Al as well now if you take the oxide of Zn which is ZnO and you react it with uh, an acid it will displace the not only the H2 it will displace the H2O and the compound the elements left will form the uh, compounds like again Na2ZnO2 um, now when you have the base of Zn so that will be ZnOH2 sorry not the base base is wrong word because even um, O is a base ZnO is a base what I mean is if you take the hydroxide of Zn, that's ZnOH2, reacted with an acid, it will again displace only the water. The other elements will combine to form whichever compound it is. Again, it'll be Na2ZnO2 and it'll be something like that. So you could just see that in your books. Now, Al is a bit more strange. Um, at the first step it's fine um, when you react Al with an acid it too will displace just H2 um, but now here when you react Al with a base you also need to add water to the reaction so it's aluminium plus water plus base will give you uh, say it is Al plus NaOH plus H2O taking the simplest space here and this will give you NaAlO2 similar compound to this similar sounding NaAlO2 and H2 will displace uh, H2 but just remember that there is this extra H2O here now um, coming to Al2O3 uh, when this reacts with an acid uh, it'll be the same as Zn it'll displace the H2O and the rest of the elements remaining will form a compound um, now the exception comes here uh, in the case of HCl if you react it with HCl what happens is that it only gives an H2 not an H2O so you should just remember that as a fact and uh, the rest is just the same the hydroxide will displace only the water and uh, yeah the rest is the same so this property is called amphoteric nature of uh, these two compounds uh, in your syllabus these are the only two so you should know these um, and these do come pretty often 
so don't just discard it because it's at the end of the chapter or something it's very very important in fact uh, in the 2012 paper i think it was the first question that came uh, first question first part one mark so you should do this well that's it finally thankfully for analytical chemistry uh, i hope the different colors and everything helped you a bit at least um, that's it for now